Jam is the best way to preserve so many fruits. Why? Because it's delicious. There are so many ways to use jam, whether it's overnight oats on top of yogurt, of course, bread, in tarts, bars, whatever it is. So I did not get strawberry jam made this year because sometimes it gets really busy and you don't. So what we do sometimes is we actually just freeze the fresh berries, they're washed, they're cleaned, and then we freeze them. And so I pulled them out of the freezer a little bit ago and have them in my jam pan. Any big, heavy bottomed, wide pan will do. So a stainless steel one with a heavy bottom is fine. A jam pan, the idea is the copper conducts heat really well. It heats up really evenly and holds the heat. It's also also wide so it allows for a lot of evaporation as they're cooking down to condense their juices and make it thicker. So I have the berries in here. They were frozen, freshly picked, then frozen. And what we do is we keep the best berries for ourselves. <laughs> Sounds kind of, but we do. The biggest berries we keep for ourselves. And then we use the smallest ones because as you're picking progressively, they get smaller and smaller because the plants get weaker and weaker and then they get done at the end. So the smallest berries are what we use in jam because they cook down, you have no idea. So to these berries, and I have three pounds here, I'm gonna add, guess what, sugar. Why do we add sugar? Well, it sweetens them. Also, this is gonna help, and I know sugar is kind of the enemy a lot of times, but it's gonna help thicken them. And this surprisingly has less than some recipes. So bear with me here as I add the sugar. So. You could also buy packets and they have pectin in them. What I don't like about them is, for me, they usually make them overly thick. And I don't like that. I don't like an overly thick gummy jam, which is more just like this goo. I like it to be what I call more of a preserve, which is gonna be a little bit thinner. It's gonna be a little bit more viscous and move easily, which I like. So I'm putting the juice of a lemon in here. Lemon brightens it all. It adds a nice little acidic kind of offset flavor that kind of wakes up everything and really brings out, honestly, the strawberry flavor. Because what you're wanting to get here is the essence of summer, that fresh berry, wonderful flavor. So I kind of use a very rough version of Christine Ferber's beautiful French preserving method for jam. And instead of doing the whole maceration method, I'm gonna actually just put this on the stove now and bring it to a boil. So I'm gonna set it right on here and just start cooking it right away. And you can just get a spoon or something just to start working it down in. Really soon here you're gonna notice that this is gonna start cooking. So I'm just gonna let it sit and I'm gonna let it slowly start extracting the juices from the strawberries and start cooking. While that's doing it, I'm gonna actually turn on my water. That's a hot water kettle. I can never get which burner goes right. Here we go. I'm gonna heat that up and then I'm gonna show you how I actually sterilize my jars. Okay, so that was obviously boiling. Sometimes it's hot, it wasn't too bad. I can touch it. So I have washed and cleaned jars, okay? They've either ran through the dishwasher or I've hand washed them. But now I'm gonna pour this boiling water, obviously it's at 212 if it's boiling, on each one, especially around the rim. Now guys, I don't need a ton of DMs. If you do it differently, if you don't feel this is safe, do what you do. This is what my great grandma did. This is what my grandma did. This is what my mom does. This is what I do. It's how I learned and it works really well. Because what you're doing is you're pouring it around where that seal is gonna happen. You're getting any of the contaminants off and you're sterilizing them. Some people put them in the oven. Some people put them in boiling water for a while. All those methods are great. You do you. I'm gonna do me. And this for me works really well. So I'm gonna let those sit now that I've put it and poured it around each rim. Let those cool off a bit because they're kind of hot. And I'm gonna dump the water out. We'll check back when the strawberries start to look different. Okay, you guys, it has been so quick. We're talking five minutes. And already you can see that the sugars, the lemon juice are starting to pull that liquid out of the strawberries. And what I'm gonna do is let this come up to a boil. And I don't mean just boiling around the edges. I mean a boil throughout, and you'll see why here in a minute. Okay, it's boiling throughout. It's a hard boil. I've stirred it and it keeps boiling. That's a rolling boil. I'm turning it off, and then I'm just gonna pick this up. Hot pads, probably a good idea. And I'm gonna just pour it right into the sieve. So it's just a colander on top of a bowl, obviously. We're gonna get all the 
actual fruit pieces out. And if there's any left in that pan, we can just, we can pull them out. And so what I'm gonna let this do is I'm gonna pick this up. I want those juices to come out. See all those juices? And this is how we're gonna thicken it up. This is why I love this method, because you kind of keep the fruit somewhat. And then what we're gonna do, and I'm using things under this just so I don't get splatters everywhere and the drips and the mess go on other things. We're gonna heat this back up to about 221, so it's really gonna thicken it and create almost like a syrup and then add the fruit back. And that's what's gonna actually create the jam or preserves. So let me pull out, there's a couple pieces in here I just wanna get out. Because if you would heat all the fruit back up with it, one, the fruit would really degrade. Two, the fruit doesn't necessarily want or need that much cooking. I'm gonna get a few drips off. I'm kind of one of those clean as you go people. So, I'm gonna let these drip out just a little bit then add any of that residual juice too because as you can see, there's still just a little bit more. But I can add this one back at the moment. Now, if you're worried about seeds or you're saying because they're smaller berries, they have more seeds, because berries have the same amount of seeds no matter if they're small or little, so. You could actually run this through a really fine sieve and try to get those out. I'm not worried about them, so I'm gonna add them back in at the moment. Oh, that beautiful juice. And guys, it's like such a strong strawberry flavor and that's what I love. So obviously more juice. We're gonna add this back in too. And now I'm going to continue and I'm gonna cook this, bring this back to a boil, the syrup mixture, and let it get to, like I said, 221 degrees. That's where it's gonna to start to thicken. And that's the point you wanna get it to. So temperatures matter in this case, kind of like with candy. Think of this as kind of like a rough candy thing. So a good thermometer makes a difference too. I love the Thermapen. You want an instant read thermometer in the sense that it will give you instant temperatures. So water boils, a liquid boils at 212 degrees. We're getting this to 221. So it takes a little bit farther. So don't worry, give it time. So when I check the temperature, I like to pick up and tip this to make sure you get the thick and the liquid kind of all comes to one side and then start testing it. So right now we're at two, don't touch the bottom because that changes it. We're only at like 213 to 215. It has to, what, in order for the temperature to go up, you have to cook off some excess water. Water until it boils off more will not let it go above 212 for a while. While that is still boiling, I'm gonna get my jars over here. They're cool enough now that I can just dump the water out, set them on a tray. I do everything on trays if I can, just little baking pans or sheet pans, because then it's gonna catch drips. Red is obviously very staining. Why even mess with it? And I do extra jars than I need usually just because I wanna make sure. And I always do one miniature jar. That way whatever's left, you can either just put in the fridge or if you wanna make a little gifted one, you can do that too. So I'm gonna bring these over. I'm gonna set them here so they're ready. I have my funnel ready, a canning funnel is good. You want a jar lifter. I like these ones with grips. You don't have to worry about losing the jar. And then I'm also getting my water bath ready. So for me, I have this fiddle water. What is this? This is a pasta cooker, by the way. I also use it when I blanch garden produce. It has a colander fitted inside of it. You do not have to use this, but what I like is you have to keep jars off the bottom of a pan. So if you don't have which I don't expect you to, something like this. Put a disc in the bottom, they make these for canning. This sits in the bottom, keeps it just like a quarter of an inch off the bottom, and you put your jars on top. If you put your jars directly on the bottom of that kettle, your water bath kettle, they could burst. It makes it too hot, because the heat is uneven down there. You want them just to have water all around them. So what I like about this, you can cut the recipe in half. That's fine. You don't have to do a huge quantity. I usually happen to have way too much and just am like, you know what, I'm gonna can it all at once so I like to do a big batch. You can make this work for you. And you can see that once you have all the components here, we're talking three ingredients for the jam, jars, and then lids. So lids have changed actually. When I was younger, you used to have to keep them in warm, hot water on the stove. That's how I always grew up doing it. Now you just wash them and dry them. So I'm gonna wash and dry these. 
and then they'll be ready to go too. As you can see, it's kind of looking like candy making at this point. And up, oh, 221. That's exactly what we want. And let me show you, because I say don't touch the bottom. If you touch the bottom of your pan, oh look how it's shooting up all of a sudden. So you want to make sure it's just in the liquid and then I move it around because different points are different. Okay, we're going to add the fruit back in. And now we want this to come up to a boil once more. Just because you want everything to be at the same temperature when you're going to can. And you want to make sure that fruit is hot too. This is what I love. So. Let me also show you. If you don't want big pieces of fruit, or if that's not your thing, let me see if I have, I do, a masher. You can just take a potato masher and go through and actually mash some of your strawberries up. You could also take an immersion blender off the heat, don't do it on the heat, and kind of slightly break them up like that too. I do find that once you water bath them, they break down even more, usually in the jar and get really soft. But I sometimes like to help them along because also depending on their ripeness level, they break down at different rates. Some of them really break down, some of them don't. So it's just a good way to get some breakage, some down, and it's kind of up to you how you like a jam. So we're gonna let this boil for about five minutes. I know some of you are gonna ask about the um, foam that's on top because that's kind of a thing. And what you can do is skim it off. So you can take a wide spoon and we can just actually go in and take some of that foam and skim it off. I don't know, this is kind of just to create a more clean jam. Some people also in old time recipes will add like, oh, a teaspoon or two of butter and that can actually help it. That also usually only helps it so it doesn't boil over, but it does keep some of that foam down too. Okay, this is boiled for about five minutes. I'm gonna bring it over. It's still hot, really hot. So now we're just gonna put it into jars. A funnel, obviously, makes a huge difference and a nice wide ladle. There's really no better way to do it. And what I, like, you're gonna see that I have some pieces of fruit and then I also just have some nice liquid to go with it and it has a nice viscosity. So if you're wanting to check how thick yours is or how it's gonna be once it's done, you have a plate in the freezer, like a little pie plate. You pull it out once it's been in there for, you know, a while, make sure it's good and cold. And then you take it out, you put some of the jam on it, it instantly cools it and you can see how quickly it falls and that will kind of give you your viscosity. And then you can see how much I'm leaving on there just right about a quarter inch of headspace. Headspace is the room you leave right above. And you go about a quarter to a half on this. Headspace is important. You, if you make it too full, it won't seal. The lid will not adhere because it gets too full as it's cooking in the water bath. And if you have too little headspace, I mean too much headspace, it leaves too much room for bacteria, for things that are bad. So you definitely want to stick to that and notice that headspace. And I know it always looks like when you're making this, you're like, oh my goodness, this is going to be so much jam. Guys, it really isn't. So for a family, this might last you through a year, but it also may not. You may want to make a few batches or you may want to make other jams because depending how you eat jam. Now, I am going to also admit, I view jam as a treat, guys. There's a lot of sugar in it, so it's kind of like one of those things where it's maybe on a special morning, on a weekend morning. It's also a great thing for gifts. I love to give it away because when you grew the produce and you make the jam, there's just to me nothing more special than sharing that with other people. That sounds way too idyllic, but I'm being serious. Because in this day and age, we all know it's not normal just to have homemade jam all the time. But it should be. This is just like growing up. We always had peach jam, apricot jam, strawberry jam, grape jam. Okay, so now if you got a little dirt around the tops, not good. I still have some hot water and you'll see what I'm gonna do. You just need to fill something up with hot water like that. 
Then we're gonna take a paper towel, like this. We're gonna dip it in the hot water and we're just gonna go around and clean off every top. See how I did that? And there's just a little bit left on there, see? So what that's gonna make sure that we ensure is clean any contaminants off and then your lid is gonna have a very clean, free surface to adhere to and that's what's important here. You don't want any contaminants on there. You don't want anything that would hamper the lid maybe not sealing. You're not going to this work or not having a lid seal. If you follow all these steps, you hardly ever don't have a lid seal. Now, as you notice, I just bought lids. Now, you can go buy a whole complete set of either rings and lids or a whole box of jars and lids, and that's gonna be fine. But if you can a lot, like I do, year to year, that's why you're gonna see a little bit of rust on some of these, is because I am reusing the rings every year. Every year, I reuse all these, and all I do is buy lids. So we're just gonna set those on top. Guys, I'm so excited because I think what's fun is this shows you how easy this can be. Now, the tightness is always something that I think scares people. Like, how tight do you make it? If you make it too tight, it could buckle. You just do it until you feel resistance, but not so tight that you couldn't turn it anymore. You want just a little bit of give, which, yes, sounds kind of annoying, but once you do it a time or two, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, tight. No more. Don't make it so tight that you're like trying to strain yourself. It's not like that. And since I'm not, you know, that's such a cute one. I am gonna do that one. I cleaned it off, so we're just gonna go ahead and do it because why not? What a beautiful gift. Okay, now since I put these on a tray, I can take these over to my water bath here. Let's check it. It's right about at a boiling. You want it to be boiling before you put them in and then you bring it back to a boil. And we're just gonna set them right down in that hot boiling water. That's why you have a lifter. Don't even think you're gonna try it on your own, because guess what? You're not, and yes, you would hurt yourself. You want them to be covered by with water. I usually say by an inch, and as you go in, the water gets displaced above them, so obviously that's how it's gonna help cover them. If you need to, you could always put in an empty jar and that would displace more water. They're covered, you're good. It's still kind of bubbling, but we want to come up to a good boil. And then guys, we water bath it, which means at a boil, 10 minutes. That's it, and then you're done. So, when it's at a boil, I'll tell you. When the 10 minutes are done, I'll tell you. And we'll have jam. And there's some more in here I can eat, so that's good, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. So these have been in 10 minutes, only 10 minutes. That's how quick this is. And I turned it off. I'm gonna pull them out, slightly tip them, just get the water off the top, and then it evaporates really quickly because it was so hot. And that's what's nice about having these gripper type. You can find them a lot of places, so I don't think you should have a problem finding them. So out of this, three pounds of fruit, we are getting almost six jars. And I did have a little bit in the end left, and it almost would have made, I think, a full six, but that's okay, we're getting five and a half. And that is just fine, because we have the perfect little gift one. So now within probably the next, I don't know, it could be up, it can sometimes take on certain things overnight even, but it should only take a couple hours if, probably here within quite a, just a few minutes, I'm gonna hear the pops. That means they're gonna seal. So to check for a seal, you can see right now that they're kind of pulling in and you see just the very center of that lid is popped. Do not touch them when they're in the state, but you can kind of see up, down. You want it to be down. So wait, I like to wait overnight and then tomorrow check them once they're fully cooled. If they still have that ping and they didn't seal, put it in the fridge, eat it, it will be fine. If they sealed, they are shelf stable. Put them in a basement, a cool dark place, in a cupboard, use them for up to a year. That's how easy, I know it's a long video, but it's easy, I promise. If you have the components, if you have fruit, make jam. I hope you love this. I hope you share it around. I hope everyone sees how easy this is because jam making is fun. It's fun. Okay, I'm gonna eat it now because I do have a little bit left. Come back.